Do you always hear things like you got to gain the followers? You got to push the traffic to your website. You got to get that first party data. Or do you hear things like you got to push traffic to a funnel? You got to push traffic to your email list, traffic, traffic, traffic. But then it goes a question of why does all this matter? If you are feeling the pause, it's because it's not about how many followers you get, how much traffic you put, all the things. Having these metrics are great as key performing indicators to understand the healthiness of your actual social media and all the efforts that you're doing with your online community. However, the base thing that you're trying to do is understand where your online community fits in the relationship that you're building with your customer. Because while building online community is great, while having this crockpot is great, it still has to point and connect back to your end goals, right? In this video, we're going to talk about what is the true ROI of all these marketing efforts that you're working on. And that goes back to your customer journey. Hey, happy human. My name is Lauren, like Lauren with an R, and I help change makers and marketers create their marketing system that helps them thrive so they can get out of the marketing fluff and back into building trust with their customers. If you are tired with the hustle and grind and not knowing where it's all pointing to, I highly suggest you hit that like and subscribe button on this YouTube channel. You will have a video from me every single Wednesday. And if you want, you can sign up for my newsletter and be able to get the latest algorithm updates all the info down below. So now you must be wondering, what is a customer journey? A customer journey is the whole entire experience that your customer is going to have from the first time they hear about you, to the time they purchase with you, to their experience with you, to also after their initial purchase with you, how they continue working with you, how they come back, also how they bring a friend with you along the way. It is that whole entire customer experience, but it's more than just the tactical. It's also their emotional feelings that they experience throughout the journey. But Warren, don't I just need to know how to get people through the door? Yes, you do. But that's just part of the journey. And here's the thing. If you only know how to get people through the door the first time and that's it, you're forever gonna be stuck in the hustle and grind. Let me explain. If you think about it this way, when a business starts or a new venture starts in general, whether it's a creating content or in business starts, right? Um, it feels like a hustle and a grind the whole entire time, right? Cause you're just like, gotta get momentum, gotta get people going, all the things above. And it feels like a constant hustle and grind to get the new clients, but what happens to them after they become a client. Because here's the key to having a sustainable, growing, economically scaling business. It is not just about getting new customers acquisition or increasing your market share through the door. It's about maintaining that customer relation so it continues rippling outward. And how that works, if we boil it down to marketing jargon, is how do you maintain happy customers and increase your word of mouth? Because when we're talking about risk analysis and stuff like that for financial decisions, it's all about cost. Whether it is opportunity cost, cost of time, cost of finances, et cetera, right? And you getting that customer through the door the first time, that took cost. If we put it in perspective, if it takes $600 for a cost of acquisition cost, and it takes 600 through the door to get them through the door for the first time, is it just like $600 and spend and done? No, because that equals the value of your customer. If you only focus on getting them through the door and not maintain the relationship afterwards, then that value starts decreasing. It's like a car. You know how you drive a car out of the parking lot, the value starts decreasing, right? That's the same thing. However, just like a car, you have to maintain that car and the relationship with that car. And the same thing applies with your end consumer. You have to maintain that relationship with your customer. If it took you that long to build trust with them, when they have 20 other options available, you want to make sure that they come back again and again. And here's the key. In this day and era where there are unprecedented times where things are changing constantly, if you do not build value with them beyond 
price, you will end up in a price war and you will lose the loyalty that you could have naturally made with your customer to begin with. And that always boils down to your customer journey. So in the next couple of sections, we are going to be walking through what it takes to design a customer journey so that you know off the top of your head what that journey looks like so that whenever a large thing happens, you're tweaking it. The system is built off of how your relationship is built, aka the customer journey. So let's dive in. So before we dive into designing your customer journey, I want to point out the overall context of what our end goal is going to be. I want to point out that with this, we're actually painting a flow of the relationship that you are building with your customer. And depending on where you are in your business and the customer journey, it's definitely gonna be easier when you're talking about your early adopter, but it may get a little bit more complex when we're starting to talk about middle adopters, late adopters, and other people. Bear this in mind, there is a general customer journey, but depending on who we're defining as your customer, customer, they may vary in their tactical journey or when they enter into the customer journey and etc. It's kind of like multiple streams entering a gigantic river that we're flowing through for your brand. If you are still confused on who your ideal customer is, what is the general relationship that you're building with them, all that jazz, I highly suggest you go and click my other previous videos talking about defining your brand's customer relationship. I will put it right here for you. But moving on, there are two different parts in your customer journey, the tactical and the emotional. The tactical is the step-by-step -step process of which they're gonna come in. Maybe they saw an ad, then they go to your social, then they go to your website. And it's not a linear process either. It could be like there's multiple touch points along the way, but it is in understanding how the emotional side arises that you're actually able to design the best optimized tactical step to get someone through the door. Why? Because at the end of the day, we're not machines, we are human beings and human beings are emotional. Yes, I know. For those that are you are rational leaning, like myself, we don't like to be called emotional, but we are social creatures and we are human beings and emotions do apply. Every single thing that you make that makes you motivated, that makes you excited, whatever the decision is that you are making in this world is motivated by your emotional goals that you're looking for. So with that, the customer journey is both of these pieces. Before we could build that trust on a tactical platform like social media, we need to know where their emotional mindset is so that they can become one of your biggest fans. So what is the mindset journey? The mindset journey is the mindset that your customer is in from the time that they start researching about what they're looking for that you can offer as a service or product to the time that they purchase with you, to the time after their experience with you, and to when they are so excited with their experience with you to bring a friend, right? So it's that whole entire journey. And it is a series of phases, but it shows up really like that funnel in. Now, when we talk about marketing funnels, you're probably gonna hear a lot of different types of funnels. But this specific funnel is the mindset journey funnel. It's kind of like the overarching theme funnel that all the other funnels tactically kind of flow into. And so this funnel is three main parts. You have the awareness stage at the top funnel. This is when all they're feeling is pain points. They feel like something is happening, they know something's wrong, and it's piquing their interest that they want to go figure out this. And then you get into what we call the consideration part. It's the middle part of the funnel, and it is focused on where they're like, cool, these pain points actually is this issue. And so instead of just being like, let me answer XYZ symptom, this is the actual root issue that you are solving for them. And then they get to the final part of the funnel at the very bottom before they become your customer, which is the decision stage. So they realize that I feel this pain point in the way that I consume water, I need to stay more hydrated. I realize the key thing is that it's the way that this bottle operates and these key specific checkpoints that create to where I don't drink enough water. Water. So then I start going into shopping stages to figure out where and what type of water bottle I can buy, what type of feature it is, what is the brand, does the brand have the trust, right? Like, so think of all of these checklists that I'm thinking of as they get through the door. The reason why I need to increase my hydration is so that I can live a better life. So the reason why I buy this X product allows me to do X in life. This key phrase 
This is why your customers choose to stay with you. And that is the value that you are bringing through this bottle that we are offering in this great service and this great product. We are helping our customers stay hydrated and live a better life. And the value that we are building isn't that we just have a really good product that you can trust, but we're a brand that aligns with you on the value of living a healthy life. So we're going to create a community for you to be a part of for a healthier life and so that you are more excited to continue having healthier life goals and also want to tell your friends about this community that we've built as this water bottle brand. Does that sound familiar? I used a water bottle in this example, but let's think of all the fashion industry, right? We think of Nike and Lululemon and all of the above. They all go into this emotional journey, right? to show up when we do both of these together. So you have the tactical side. So just how I described that mindset journey that you're solving on with that product that we're talking about, the water bottle, right? So in the tactical spaces, okay, cool. I now know the mindset journey that someone's gonna go through for their water bottle journey. And then the tactical side, it's the way that I use certain pieces in my marketing mix. For example, in the top funnel awareness, where we're talking about pain points and stuff like that, that's where you start seeing ads, social media, PR, where we are catching your consumer's reaction because they're feeling the pain point and the content in this top of funnel is helping them connect the dots. So if they're feeling the pain point at the very top of the awareness funnel, this content that you're producing is helping them connect from the, I see your pain point, Here's the real issue, right? It connects them into that consideration stage and you take it to the next step further with other parts of your content journey, whether that's your website or it's your email or anything in between where you show them, great, I've now connected you and educated you or entertained you into understanding your pain point and then how it turns into this issue. Here's how we can help you with this issue. And that shows up again in the website or in the email. The key in all of this about building trust in the correct way is setting the correct expectations. Whether you're a product or a service, setting the correct expectations equals setting yourself up for success. And here's what I mean. If you are over-promising or under-promising, it creates different expectations. And the reality is, is that when you're on social media, the thing that gets people through the door is hearing word of mouth. Now, word of mouth is not inherently good or bad. So you can have something go viral about a great user generated content as bad as a viral trending calling out experience on Twitter. We have all seen that happen. So when you set up the expectations correctly and managing the expectations throughout the journey with you, you are less likely to see a blowout on it and produce more good user generated content versus bad generated content. Now, Throughout this whole entire journey, drop off does happen. Remember, it's a funnel that gets smaller and smaller and smaller, meaning people are going to fall off along the way. So another piece of your tactical journey is in your automation is what happens when someone drops off. How do I get them back? Because people drop off for a variety of reasons, but the key in all of that is if someone drops off because you're out of stock, for example, or anything like that, you have to remind them why they wanted to purchase from you in the first place because nothing is going to create that first impression excitement quite like the first impression. We want to remind them of their initial excitement along the way so they actually come back through the door. And if you're talking about going to past customers, we want to remind them of the excitement because each time someone is reminded, it doubles down why they like your product or service so much. And that doubling down in it is reaffirming why they want to continue working with you. It reaffirms and it builds the brand loyalty. And in times of unprecedented change, the brand loyalty and trust is the thing that keeps your business in sustaining and maintaining itself while still building in new customers because your main fan base is there for, for you through thick and thin. And the biggest reason why someone stays with your brand is because you guys are connecting on a larger mission. So what can you create in your campaigns, in your content that speaks to the larger missions 
and amplify what you're doing with influencers, right? Like, so we barely touched on influencers a little bit, but think about it this way. If you are only reaching out to your influencer to talk about your product, you're basically saying sell for me, right? But what if you created a campaign that gets them excited because you're connecting with them at a human level. So not only do they love your product, they're excited for what you stand for. Wait, doesn't that sound familiar? So for example, Ari, as what they did is they took some of their biggest influencers and I'm talking models and actors and people like that and talk about what they're excited about, their mental state, a stand on what social media should be. They did all these things and yeah, they were wearing the clothing of Ari at the time and stuff like that. But the key was like their mental mindset. And when they do that, they're creating content that doesn't feel like an ad. It's creating content that more people wanna share, that more people wanna consume because they're connecting at a human level, a larger purpose, a deeper purpose that we as all human beings want to connect on. And it ties back to their larger mission of wanting to create a clothing brand that is inclusive for women for being real women. They started that when they built and decided to show a variety of size of women and showing real women. And now they're taking that next level with being influencers talking about being a real woman. And they're sharing a lifestyle brand about good mental health in our current society that as many people are refocusing on being better about their mental health too. The power behind that is that a customer of Airy not only feels like they're feeling seen and heard and their shopping experience where they're not being judged for fashion on something as intimate as bras, they are also being a seen as a human being in their mindset and mental health that makes them so excited to stand behind this brand so that if, for example, they decide to go more sustainable or you know inflation or anything like that and the price of a bra increases someone's still going to continue shopping at airy because they never have to worry about their shopping experience they are comfortable with the product that is being done and the sustainability of the product and most importantly they stand behind a brand they're excited to stand about and talk about so how are you creating content that is inspiring the actions of your customer so as always, remember, nothing happens overnight. So again, ask yourself, what is the next step? What is the one thing that I can do in my current customer journey? If you watch the whole entire video all the way through, you're probably doing all of these things already. So it's asking yourself, how do I take it up to that next level that really connects at the human to human side of who I am and so that I can continue amplifying that with my customer. And if you're already starting to think of those ideas, please comment below in this video and tell me of those. I'll be in the comment threads chatting away with you along the way. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Remember guys, influence happens one drop at a time and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.